taking your time today to join me out of your busy day. Thank you, Star. Oh, yes, this is um, a platform that I've created called Candid Conversations. And I usually just invite um, entrepreneurs, creatives, from every industry to talk about their story and um, what contributed to their success and hopefully inspire the people who watch these videos. So to have you on my platform is an incredible honor um, and thank you so, so much for agreeing. Um, thank to, you. Wow. <laughs> to, yeah, to do this. Um, so I think the first question that um, I'd like to ask is, Umam Somi, Uvela Api, Kulegan Chani, and what's her, her life story, her background? Sure. <laughs> do you have do you have a month? <laughs> so my my life actually it's it's amazing that you asked that stuff because the my kids were just saying even yesterday, mommy, you just need to write a book. Your <laughs> life is just like you just need to write a book. So Ubabuami who's late, who passed away in 2016, Dr. Vivian Somi was a the Lutheran church. So my dad used to study a lot and he would go and live in, in whatever country or city where he's studying at whichever university and he'll always take his family with. Mm. So I'm American born. I was born in America, in Ohio, when my dad was studying there. Okay. Um, yeah, and I came back to South Africa with my parents and my two older brothers when I was three. Sakhalagoma Pumulo, which is north of KwaZulu Natal. Mm -hmm. um, and we left again singing at six. So we couldn't put our mum and our mum on the line. So so should just by four. So mm -hmm. two older brothers, myself and my younger brother Umusa. And then we left and we lived in Canada for another five years. My dad was studying there again. Mm -hmm. So my mom would stop her nursing um, profession, and you know she will freeze everything and would just follow my dad. That was always yeah. my life. And we lived in Canada for five blissful years, the best years of my, you know, of my growing up, because at least I remember that part. Um, America and um, Ohio, I hardly remember because obviously I was a baby in Abu yeah. like three, you know, no recollection. I just have pictures and stuff to see. Um, then we lived and we went back to Guamapumulo as, as well, to where my dad had been teaching. And he went back to the Lutheran seminary to teach there again, which was um, a Lutheran uh, seminary. Mm. And then, <clears throat> so we stayed there till like literally till I went to high school, because then I went to Ngafunda um, Gamapumulo when we came back from Canada. And, and then I went to boarding school in Albini, which is in, in Jongweni, between yeah. Pine Town and Tamaritzburg. I'm sure you've heard of it. Yes, I went yes, there yes. to my matric. I matriculated there. And from there, um, I went to, because I, my dad had now started working at UKZN at the university, mm. teaching the uh, Department, Department of Theology. So obviously for me, as a, as a child of a lecturer, it was easier because of scholarship and bursaries and stuff. Mm. Because my dad being a pastor, there was no way we were going to be able to afford university without yeah. financial assistance. We are born. So then we all moved to Peter Marisbeck, go with my in my metric year. And my older brother passed away the same year, or 89, in uh, these political um, um, killings that used to be very, very rampant Guazulu Natal in the, in that, at that time. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, my brother passed away at that, that time who was like my best friend, my hero, my everything. Yes. And then so me and my, my two other siblings and my parents, we now moved to Maritzburg until my dad's passing for 2016. That's when yeah. we've been all along. Um, and my mom recently just moved to a crowd bill, uh, was uh, further down. I'm sure he has a crowd bill next to mm. Stenga. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So and just then, oh, yeah. Yeah, so in the midst of all of this moving around to so many different places, e e e acting and the love for acting, yeah, kalaki, in all of that. I think I think I've just always loved it because I yeah. know but even in Canada at the church, every time we had something, maybe we had to do a performance for um as part of Sunday school for the church or 
at school, at the school that I went to, I always wanted to be part of the, the acting team. And mm. I'm lucky because obviously of being exposed to that earlier on in Canada. But I'm sure if maybe I don't know how early on I would have loved that world of mm. TV, theater, Broadway, um, you know, film, movie making type of thing. I don't know. Yeah. But I think it has, it has a lot to do with my upbringing in, in Canada where I was exposed to TV early on and and I would sit there and be like, oh, I want to be on that <laughs> red carpet. I want to do that. I want to wave to be yeah. there. You know? Yeah. And then, yeah, so I think it was just, because I know, I remember being interviewed once when I was on Generations early on and they said, what else would you have done if you hadn't... Um, acted yeah i said i think maybe i would have been maybe a social worker because i really love children and i love the elderly yeah but it would because of the of the crisis and the things that happened within social work dealing with in you know that abuse children yeah oh god who are being abused and neglected and you know i it would have gotten to me i know i i don't think i would have handled it uh, Mm. very well so Mm. But acting was always the, the, like the thing that I wanted to do. Because I even remember saying that one day when I grow up, I'm going to have an acting academy. Like, what is that? I'm going to have an acting school. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah, always been in my radar. I've always just... Yeah. What was the one role that you got while you, you started off in your career that was like, I made it in the door? I think it's adversity, my family adversity when oh, oh Dr. Klinam Shope, um, you know her name eh, as a storyteller. Yes, she, yes. Came to, she came to UKZN as um a guest lecturer that year. We were so lucky. And she said for her, you know, her her part as a guest lecturer, she would love to do Have You Seen Zandi Live a Play? And then I got to play Lindy Way in that play, which is like an amazing role. And that's, yeah, yeah. I think that was one of, that's when I was like, and because st- I started, obviously I was still at Varsity, but we started acting obviously for an outside audience. Mm-hmm. And I started seeing the response to my work and I was like, I like this. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then after Varsity, we did Macbeth. Um, uh, we traveled all over Guazulu Natal and performed Macbeth. It was a, a book for Ama Matriculant of that year. Yes, so yes, we yes. We performed the book that they were studying as part of Shakespeare because a lot of schools was, were struggling with the English Macbeth, you know. Uh, and I loved that too. So those were, that role as well was amazing because I got to play a variety of roles. I was, mm. I was one of the, of, of the witches. I was a narrator. We have also... <laughs> So by the time Yenzi Generations was a legacy, that whole thing was playing different roles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I love about your, your career is the fact that you have been so timeless from the 1990s till now. You're still wow. acting, you're still on the screen. Um, and it's actually really crazy. Ngoba, Abba Zalbami loved you on Generations. And they only tell the story of how they named me after you. And it's co- so coincidental. I'm so now, which just shows how your career has been um what has been your secrets to you know remaining relevant till this day and still telling stories on our screens i think number one star it's definitely god because Mm. it cannot be with my own there's no way i would still be here right Mm. because it's such a a no 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 yes industry no no there are more no than yes in this industry there are more everything is about how you look and you know the pressures are in this industry like crazy right but obviously god has just been so amazing in my life where he's just protected me for in so many ways in so many things in within this industry everything is by telling us money that they won't affect me Mm. And it's like some, it, it could have affected me and I could have derailed, but because mm. of just God's protection. And I think, again, my passion and my love of this industry is just so, this is it, right? Yeah. And Mangiti, this industry for me, I'm talking about holistically the creative industry. Um, it could be acting, fashion, all these, I love dance, I love, you know, I love the yeah. world, everything, all the genres that have to do with the creative industry and within the industry, there are so many uh, genres within this industry. So yeah. 
Elena for now. It's okay, let me take a break from the acting. Let me direct. Let me get into fashion. Let me start my own fashion label type of thing. Because mm. anything within the creative story is, is what keeps me going. So I will say it's that, that, you know, that's what passion. keeps me going and made me, yeah, passion. Mm, passion yeah. and God. Um, and in, in your career, we all, in any career, anyone faces challenges or times that really test, you know, your character. What, what times did you have to face that were challenging, whether it was, you know, as an actress or as a director or as a fashion designer? What moments in your career tested you and helped you grow? Um, health, um, uh, I had a stroke, um, yeah. once in my life a couple of years ago. Mm. Um, and that was that really, because it was like, do I continue with this industry or what? Because now my speech got affected how I speak, mm. you know, I can't speak as fast as I used to speak. Now I slur my words and, you know, um, various things uh would happen even like i was saying earlier it could be just those moments where you're like wow everyone else is getting a cover on a magazine why like why am i getting that call like only once or twice a year type of thing yeah. when everyone else is getting it like yeah but and yeah. obviously we can't lie there are issues of um of colorism they still exist in our industry mm -hmm. where it's all oh, the dark-skinned girl man let's you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. those things that's why i've been so vocal about those things because they do happen mm. so they can you can imagine a younger me if i was not strong mentally and i didn't have a strong uh support structure that i had from home where bingzo kalilap where it's like you you know you're not there you don't have that look that yeah. everyone's looking for or yeah. you know that is the the it look type of thing but mm. then when you have a support, a support structure at home that tells you, what? This is what you, you, you meant to be here. Yeah. What for you to be doing? Go out there and do your thing. There's no man or no, no human being can um, deter what is meant to be in your part. Yeah, mm. So that's why I've always been such a, an, an, an activist on the importance of uh, family structure and affirmation. What's, what are we being told at home? Because yeah. that one word, that one word of support from home is what can keep you going. With all, then you can face the world. Mm. And if you've got no one, or even if you do have maybe at home, but they're not really supportive, mm. it can all when the world you start hearing more and all the negativity and everything mm. starts making mm. to you. Mm. And I can imagine which, as a creative, you have to have that, you know, that inner moral compass and that strength to survive an industry that has, you know, that gives so much pressure towards the people that are in it. What words of advice would you have to put as a abandon that maybe don't have that family structure to support them and encourage them and that just they have themselves to make it? How would you encourage them um, to, you know, overcome other challenges that they'll face in their career? Um, I would say number one, be, be your, your best and your biggest hype man. Be, you've got to hype yourself up. You know, yeah. we're going to help basketball players are like, yeah. <laughs> yes, no, yes, yes, yes. You know, so you can look at someone and think, woo, was what over, confident, moment. Like, yeah. what? That's why they're great. True. That's why Muhammad Ali was the greatest because he was like, I'm the greatest. And mm. maybe because he was trying to speak against the voice, the negative voices that were saying, who are you? You're not the greatest. You are. And, he would, and he would be the greatest and he would mm. win and go on to be the greatest Muhammad Ali that we all know, Namfanji, because he would yeah. be his greatest hyper. Right? So I would say, number one, if not everyone is privileged to have that supportive family structure, like you said, but create that for yourself sometimes so, it doesn't even have to be blood it can be just a teacher who believes in you mm. who just is this person who is your mentor who believes and sees something in you <laughs> uh, this person believes in me so much it's like i am so as as with you know so people like that because they are rare when you see that person instead of pushing them off just hold on to them. Hold on to them. Make them, you know, because now casting someone, especially in those uh, situations, because with all these things, the citizens are 
it's so hard to trust. But they are still really good teachers. They are mm. still some good leaders. They are still amazing pastors where you could just say, and just make them your, your second adopted uh, family if you have to. But mm. find someone within your community. Sometimes it can be someone who's within your age group. Just that friend, and just say, oh, hey, you know, I'm or I'm just giving up. Yeah. I'm doing this. And that person is like, what? We've got to go to varsity. And after varsity, we've got to do this so we can get out of the situation. There mm. are those people. God places them in our path. So it's for us to really um, be, you know, um, vigilant in trying to see who's within my space. Yeah. Some people like to call them tribe, who's my tribe? tribe, but everyone has their tribe. So find your tribe and really hold on to them. And your tribe, like I say, could be your teacher, could be your pastor, could be a local community person, could be someone within your age group, or we, we, about that type. we all have someone. There's no way where we can't go back. You can't always say, I'll hype myself up. Now we are Katala. True, we are Katala as a person. Katala as a person, mm. it's only natural. So you just need to bounce off Umudo Owazi, who really believes in you and just sees you bigger than you, you see yourself at that time. Mm. Yeah. Um, as someone who has spent you know, a long time in the industry, how do you think we can create a society, especially in South Africa, that makes being an actress or a presenter, or whatever it is, a viable career option and expand the industry to give room to Ezinyingane that are in communities that maybe may not know, as you said, when if you stayed in Mapumulo, you wouldn't know if you're you know, an actress today. And it's a problem that we face in a lot of com communities Absolutely. where they can just become a social worker or the Godela and then Pela Lapo, yeah. you know, and there's so yeah. much. You know, and there's so much hidden talent, I believe, in a lot of African children of storytelling that never comes out. So what do you think, you know, we can do as a country, as a, as a society, to create the environment that is conducive to producing the next best storytellers of the world? Yeah. Hmm. What a beautiful question, Star, because um, I think, I, and I always say this, the best way we can do, we can be the best citizens, first and foremost, is start mm -hmm. wherever we are. Yeah. And this thing of waiting on government, yeah, well, okay. waiting until Kwakiwa is Chalana, then says to have a few extra panasoke, you go back, Silinde, Silinde, until, you know what I'm saying? That waiting mm -hmm. for, that waiting for, waiting for Bajo. Waiting for Bajo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we really have to get into a space where we say create it for ourselves. I'm sure you know her, the folk singer, you know. Umam Dunoge comes from um, a family where her parents were that family they would open up their space they loved the art so much but they would just open up their yard would every day after school kids are products of one yeah where kids would come to that house and they sit on the grass do their homework Get a mat drums, get dance, or get 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 performer, get all these things, and look at the talent, the amount of talent of the people who come from those type of Abo Gibson Kent would do the same thing, where they will turn a garage Abo into theater spaces. Yeah. So we need to stop that thing and just look within us and start saying, okay, um, because unfortunately we don't have our YMCA's anymore. Where when we used to grow up, they'll be like, okay, go to the local YMCA with like youth centers mm. where it would be like arts activity, wire, wire type of thing. Uh, um, Soweto had it, Guamash, like all the townships had it. Yeah. Now that my YMCA, Gupeli, type of thing. So now we need to go back to that mentality, my YMCA, because there was, there was strategy in that. The strategy was getting kids off the streets, getting kids away from my pregnancies, because once people, kids are bored, obviously they're like now, because of social media and phone and TV, you know, that whole world has been taken away because now it's been made immediate with yeah. phones and everything. 
But if they had to get involved still in creative activities, they would, they would tune in. They would be about that. But it's because I vehicle. So you, we can't blame the kids for being so much into um, the techno world the way they are. Mm. And now because the world has moved into its digital. So we need to also move with the times. We can't yeah. recreate But now how do we incorporate still those creative spaces and incorporate innovation, digital stuff, illustration and you know, vlogs, even web series. I'm saying mm. creating a series and all these. I'm a, yes, I'm a YouTube I'm a, a mm. YouTube series and all these. But you create those centers of collaboration spaces that everyone's like, oh my god, I can't wait for after school to go to whatever the center is and create those. So I think the challenge now is within us, Uguti. Let us start wherever we are to just say, I'm starting. I'm inspired mm. by those times of Abo Mamu Nabo Babu Nogo. I'm inspired by Abo Gibson Kent. But now because we're living in this time, how do I now take it forward? Still make yeah. it relevant. And you know, so that I must I must imagine if these spaces had to compete with oh my gosh, like Soweto, whatever center art center is going through Hillcrest, AKZN, Yo Sangana at whatever school. Because yeah. I'm a creative are going to, you know, uh, dance offs or, or whatever. Yeah. So, and we have to start. We can't wait for being within the school environment to do that or within an until I'm done with school and I'll go and find a space and do those things. We have to start doing it ourselves. Mm-hmm. So you can even start. <laughs> I think you've given me a task to do now. Yeah. Yeah, no, it reminds Absolutely. me it reminds me of um, you know, when you're talking about how people used to start, you know, plays and, and activities in their garages. My grandfather, um, he started yeah. a, a music group called Itembala Makato Liga and they made a lot of gospel music. Wow, I pray yeah. of Itembala Makato Liga. Yeah. Yes, U U U Tog was so Mikota he he passed away this year, which is oh sad. God. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I used to go visit him, Imlaz, you know, Baba, Sasfiga, Silas, and usually on a Sunday, Gokfiga, Ikwayabo, and he'd turn his garage mm. into a whole recording studio and he'd play the keyboard mm. and he'd compose the music. And I could see, with, he, with the little resources that he had, he was able to make so many albums and so much music. And it just, mm. you know, is a testament to what you just said about how you need to use what you yeah. have and create more opportunities Absolutely. for yourself. Yeah, yes. yeah, that, that's, that's incredible. Um, I so was by the like, time we approach government, you've yes. started something. So if I'm saying short on my instruments, then you can say, arts and culture, we've already started a group, but it's short on my keyboards, it's oh, short on my drum, but at least there's something there instead of, we're going to start the day government buys us everything. Thing. We are both. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's incredibly powerful. I hope it inspires people to also, you know, create their own opportunities. Um, I'd like to know what has been your out of your whole career. What has been the f- the most favorite role that you loved playing, and why did you, you know, love playing that role? I loved playing Zolega since I won't lie. <laughs> like that, that was a dream. That was a dream to be able to. Um, it's everyone's dream to get a character like Uzolega. It's everyone's dream to get a character like Uzinzi. So within a whole series or a, a soapy, I was able to, in one day, to always have the opportunity to play these two. So yeah. it initially, obviously, I, you know, I felt very challenged because it was very technical I in terms imagine. of the scripts, the lines, the, the, the technicality of how it was shot. Mm-hmm. But now, but they were still trying it out. This whole thing of like, how do we do a split screen when we're doing one and stuff. But I took the challenge on because for some reason, every time we did it, I just was like, I think this is going to pay off. This is, you know, this is, yeah, it's stressful now. Everyone's gone and I'm left in the studio talking to myself. <laughs> but <laughs> I, just, I really just saw the, the bigger picture of it. This is training. This, this is like really training me as as an actress so i yeah. loved absolutely loved those roles and i'm glad they didn't kill them off because you <laughs> never know you never know you never know yeah. and yeah. maybe three things that uh, a budding actress can learn from your career learn or like tips yes. that i can yes yes don't stop 
the, the side um, training for the craft. Mm. Don't stop that. Be that person who, yes, maybe you get, um, let's say in the meantime, maybe let's say the bigger picture is to maybe really act. Maybe you want to go into movies and, 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 and TV. And maybe at the, at the moment it's not happening. And yeah. you happen to get maybe, let's say, presenting roles. Uh, you know, presenting gigs, and there's nothing wrong with that. But mm. if you really want, if you really want to act, don't lose the the the, the focus on the passion of what you the bigger picture. Because mm. then, with presenting, the money obviously is the way it is now. The money is big, right? So mm. you end up losing focus, and you're like, I'm going to let me concentrate on this presenting thing. It's quick bucks. But yeah. if not, Ella, your passion is to act. That's what you, you need to stay, you know, you need to focus on all the time. Don't lose that. Don't lose that fire. So on the side, Mangiti, don't uh, stop the side training is find out maybe good to let's say Johannesburg Theatre does these training classes. Um, mm. Mangi Theatre still has training classes. Uh, in, in, in Pretoria, the Pretoria, the Pretoria State Theatre still has um, Saturday acting classes. Find out what training workshops are happening. Playhouse in Durban still has them. I was a facilitator there two years ago for some of the training work on the, the acting workshops. Yeah. So align yourself with those things and be that person who's like, no matter I but when the so famous in jail, still learn. Now. Yeah, you need to still learn. And find Ugutoke and watch movies. I find that a lot of people are just watching more. There's nothing wrong with them a series, but just watch a lot of movies, indulge yourself in that thing, and find maybe a club. You know, like people would have like a book club. Yes. Find the same, um, exactly. So you've got your same type of people that love your the 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 acting world, and you discuss the acting, the behind the scenes, and that type of thing. Yeah. As long as you just keep yourself within that fire, because we're the Supuma totally from it, you find that it gets harder to get back. Mm, mm, okay. Yeah. And what new projects can we expect from um, Mam So Me in the next coming months so or year? <laughs> me and my mom. Okay. First, and just start, I've just learned this thing with because I love to share and I'll, I'll overshare, I'll tell people, and then not because I'm a do, but I do, but I found that if I say it, before I'm re while I'm still you know in the process of doing whatever and yeah. I'm still in the process of hustle, yeah. I find that I lose I lose steam because so True. I've just learned as hard as it is to do. But basically, yeah, I'm still within the hustle of pushing within the industry. Okay, no, we'll be on the lookout for that and we'll continue to support Gonke Obenzayo. Thank you so, so much. And I'm Thank sorry for you, joining me. I enjoyed talking to you so much. I learned a lot. Cheers.